Good, good morning, everyone. Um, Gerard Xavier here, and um, one of the counselors at the college. And essentially, what 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 uh, we wanted to really focus on today was uh, is the topic of motivation and stress management, and especially in the context of staying on track, staying on path uh, to successfully completing uh, the semester, and 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 of course completing your your programs here at the college. Uh, just wanted to mention and plug uh, the services that we have available to all of you. Uh, we, as I mentioned, I'm in the counseling department. And uh, one of the things that, that I really want to stress to all of you is that as, as currently enrolled students, uh, counseling services are free to you and covered under your tuition. Uh, we can certainly focus on, uh, you know, a, a whole variety of issues, whether it's going to be uh, things on, on academic issues, if you're struggling or having some difficulties in your, your school schoolwork and, and trying to figure out why that might be, um, working with you on career counseling, if you're uncertain on you know what direction you want to pursue uh, in terms of an occupation or a career path. And then thirdly, uh, the personal counseling, uh, you know, we're, we're multi-dimensional people and and so all of us have different uh, roles that we that we uh fill uh, whether we're a student a parent a worker uh you know certainly uh, a son daughter you know any any of those roles right and so thinking uh, you know getting support getting counseling help around uh, the stresses that come up in life uh, that come out uh, come up outside of our, your your enrollment here at the college uh, has a direct impact on what you do here in, on campus. And so uh, we can provide uh, support, we can provide counseling, uh, again, any variety of things that might impact your ability to successfully complete the school. So I uh, just wanna turn it over to, to Trevor and Jenna to, to introduce themselves and to talk about success coaching. Okay, my name is Jenna Flemmel and I'm a student success coach. Um, my name is Trevor Worth, and I am also a student success coach. Um, I work with pre-petition health science students. And I work with human protective service students. So I want to—I just want to uh, mention that, uh, that, that you at college is an app that the counseling department was able to secure funding for, uh, and it just launched in January of this year. Uh, I really, really encourage uh, all of you to, uh, to sign, sign in and to use uh, you at college, it, it is really a nice resource in terms of, uh, re you know, in terms of thinking about resources, supports, uh, strategies, coping strategies, um, you know, really kind of uh, taking a look at, as like what I mentioned before, kind of looking at, at, at people at, holistically, looking at, at, at ourselves uh, as a whole, and really looking at different things that can help us be successful. Uh, and so I, I really want to want uh, and encourage you to utilize you at college, uh, free to you as a student. And uh, I think Jenna is going to run through a quick demo uh, with with uh, with accessing you at college. The students who are here in the classroom and online, would you mind introducing yourselves? Yeah, I don't know. Real quick. I'm Michael. I'm a liberal arts student. Say, say again. I'm Michael. I'm a little art student. Okay. Thanks, Michael. Nice to meet you. So what I'm going to do for the students that are interested in looking at this U at Madison College, this is their starting page. You just, um, if you're new to it, you're going to hit get started. I've created account re an account recently, so I'm just going to put in my information real quick. And then I had this all set to go somewhere else, but it just didn't work for us. And that's fine. We'll do it here again real quick. Deep breathe. <laughs> yeah, deep breathe. That's what you got to practice, right? Just staying on that path. Okay, so this is my home page, and these are some of the priorities that I wanted more information about. So I chose mindfulness and balance, fitness and nutrition, physical health, purpose and meaning, and leadership and professional development. So from here, they want you to kind of click on how to explore these areas and set goals around them and let's see so once you do that they offer a ton of information videos tools and resources to increase the effectiveness 
in the areas of your interest? Um, one of the really good things too about um, you that we both, uh, all of us have really noticed is that it is, it's very unique to you as a student. Um, it's not very cookie cutter. Um, you are able to kind of put in your own formation and it really is, um, like Gerard said earlier, like holistically covering um, you as a student. So again, you you might do it with a friend or a colleague and you might see, hey, why do we have completely different things? That's kind of the hope um, is that you're not all doing the same exact thing on this website. Yeah, and so this website measures three things. They measure your success, your well-being, and your purpose by yeah, Succeed, Thrive, and Matter tab. And so the succeed is academic and career success. Thrive is for physical and mental health. And matter is for purpose and connection. So we wanted to plug you at college as, yeah, as another resource that you know, uh, students here could, could access, right? Because the, there are a lot of supports around, around uh, you know, your, your uh, role as a student. And so certainly, uh, in addition to all the things that we provide, uh, you at college is also something that you can access on your on your uh, phone or uh, laptop. Um, and then, and then to um, you know, just to some some numbers to help you kind of understand what you has done for other students and universities. Um, so, ninety eight percent of students who have used you have said that they've learned a new skill. Um, 67 have improved stress management in the first year of using the program. And then 87% have found a new campus resource, which is super important because um, you is also a compass to navigate resources on campus, but also off campus as well, which can be extremely important for students. Okay, so this next thing is um, a definition of stress. So stress is a feeling of emotional phys or physical tension. It's your body's reaction to a challenge or demand. Stress is the result of expectations and reality not coinciding or meeting. And in short burst, stress can be positive, such as when it helps you avoid danger or meet a deadline. But when it lasts for a long time, that's when it can harm your health. So we've got our first question. What is your definition of stress? Go ahead, Asia. I think um, stress, um, definitely stress in the moment takes you away from from visualizing your end goal because um, you're just really present and you're not thinking um, too far in the future. Thank you. Me personally, stress will impede my judgment. And so it sometimes will take me either off the path or make the path feel so much more longer and complicated. Thank you for sharing that. I want to say um, stress also really um, inhibits my ability to self-care. Um, I feel myself getting worse sleep, worse diet, so on and so forth. Um, so on the physical aspect of the thing, it really holds me back from uh, the optimal uh, performance. Thanks, Asia. Yeah. So I think we're going to move on to motivation. Um, so as you can see, motivation is the process that initiates, guides, and maintains goal-oriented behaviors. Um, the reason or reasons one has for acting or behaving in a particular way is also a form of motivation. Um, and as you can see um, with this picture here, the major components of motivation are activation, persistence, and then intensity. Um, so one question I wanted to pose to the students and, and those in attendance here is, what is something or some things that motivate you? You can either put it in the chat or feel free to be brave and unmute yourself. But please let us know what motivates you. For me, uh, my motivation is music. Uh, whether it's 6 a.m., 6 p.m., or, or 12 a.m., music gets me going. It's my caffeine in the morning. It's my, you know, wind down at night. Um, but then again, if I'm trying to do work, um, it's, it's almost one of my biggest deterrents because I want to listen to music, but I also need to um, pay attention. How about for all you amazing people out there? What are your motivators? <clears throat> Help me out with some tips so I know what to do. I know sometimes I feel motivated 
if I feel like I'm accomplishing a goal or if I know that's going to check something off of my list. So sometimes like stress is a thing, but if I know that I can reduce my stress by getting one more thing done, then it becomes like a motivator. Um, I think it's that and I think I'm also motivated by um, seeing progress if I'm helping someone else that really does motivate me to help. Um, other people get stuck or feel better about their position. Definitely. Thank you, Terika. How about one or two more motivators from you all? One or two. Um, you can even... When I'm in the learning zone and I'm really kind of clicking with what I'm trying to um, understand, um, then I feel like, um, kind of like we said, like all the physical health and everything is like, um, like being addressed. So like, if I'm in my healthy state and healthy state of mind, then I'm also like, um, like being productive in school and then so like that motivates me to do better in other areas of my life. That's great to hear. Thank yeah, you, Michael. Thank you very much. All right. A, a big motor for a big motivator for me is is the weekend. Um, as in, if I have plans, uh, fun plans that I have scheduled, then I like to get my work done so that when I engage in those fun activities, I can be more present and focused. Um, in, in those fun things. Great, thank you, Asia. This next question is, how do stress and motivation impact our staying on path? And Gerard, do you wanna talk a little bit about how stress and motivation impacts yeah. that type of thing? Sure. Um, so I think as we've talked about, right, uh, stress stress in small doses can be, motiv uh, can be motivating, right? It can help us uh, get on track the fact that we know we have a deadline uh, that's coming up, say a week away, can be can be helpful, right? Because it gets us to engage, gets us to focus on the on, on the goals that we that we have for ourselves, right? If we have to write that paper, or if we have to you know start studying for an exam, uh, where stress can get really detrimental is is if if we're butting up on deadlines, we're burning the midnight oil, we're Staying up all night, it's uh, affecting our self care. Um, you know, that's that's where stress can really can really start to be damaging. Um, and so, so w watching that balance and really kind of thinking about you know how we balance that is is, is going to be pretty critical. Um, motivation. When we think about motivation, I mean, there's there's certainly extrinsic and intrinsic motivators, right? And what I mean by extrinsic uh, motivation is you know thinking about um, you know, motivators that, that are externally oriented, right? What, so if you think about that, what, what is an external an example of an external motivator that, uh, that, that will oftentimes motivate you to get things done? And I think many people can relate to this, uh, um, a paycheck at the- Absolutely, at the <laughs> yeah, that's a huge one, right? So it's a huge one for all of us, we're, we're all, at some level, motivated by money, right? Uh, out of necessity, out of you know, uh, certainly out of wanting to have that stability, that safety net, right? So money, money, a, a paycheck uh, keeps us coming to work every day, right? Um, what's another another example of a motivator? I've got uh, a motivator. So, yeah. So I was thinking, you know, for your own self, it yeah. feels good when we're accomplishing goals that we set for ourselves and mm -hmm. also just, um, you know, it makes us feel prideful when mm -hmm. um, we're being our best selves. Absolutely. Absolutely. So if you're putting your best foot forward and you're, you're, you're getting your stuff done, right? Exactly. It, it, it kind of feeds itself a little bit and keeps you, keeps you going because you're not like, wow, I, I got this done. I'm ready to tackle the next thing now, right? Exactly. Okay. Okay. Um, what about intrinsic motivation? What 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 are your thoughts around things that, and that's probably the harder one to quantify or to describe, right? But what 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 are some examples of intrinsic motivation? 
what gets us intrin intrinsically motivated or internally motivated? I think for, for me, originally, yeah. um, when I was younger, it definitely was just the paycheck, right? But mm -hmm. then as I grew, as I matured and find out, found out like what I like to do and, mm -hmm. and what I'd like to be a part of, it is it is coming to work, working with the people that you work with, working mm -hmm. with the students, um, you know, without being cheesy, obviously we all work with within higher ed and within student success. Mm -hmm. um, and I, so we're all here for a certain reason. Uh, but I, for me, it was definitely looking internally and saying like, why do I want to go to work every day? Like if it is just about the paycheck, obviously, you know, education is not the best place to be, but, um, but it obviously means more to that. So for me, it was definitely just the actual work that I got to do with, with the people I wanted to, to work with. Sure. Being part, part of an outcome, right? Yep, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Michael, any ideas for yourself, either external or intern or, uh, Extrinsic or in intrinsic? Um, I think for um, my mental health, mm -hmm. um, trying to make sure that I have clear minds and clear intentions mm -hmm. on like my day or my week, um, and um, making sure that I make time for um uh, medication doctor's appointments sure and um really staying on top of that because if i don't mm -hmm. then things start breaking down and um, a crisis occurs so kind of staying on top of those things so a crisis doesn't happen that's really important for me absolutely huge huge and and that might and that's that might be the segue to our next slide, right? Mm -hmm. Which is on self care. Exactly. Yeah. And and you you could not I I, I think uh, I could not have paid 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 you better to 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 create that segue, uh, Michael. But <laughs> you speak to something that's really critical, right? Uh, which is this whole concept of self care. And Jenna's going to just read a, a couple of the definitions of self care and and how that impacts. Uh, motivation and then by by extension how that impacts our stress levels so yeah so so self-care um i think when we first met about you know describing self-care it was a little difficult because everyone kind of has their own definition but we were able to find definitions that made sense um for us for this presentation right so self-care um the practice of taking an active role in protecting one's own well-being and happiness, especially during periods of stress. Um, some examples um, of sleep, nutrition, exercise, um, finding your support system. So uh, I know I, I hear it around here and I always like to say, um, asking students like, who is your support person? Who is your go-to um, on campus, off campus? Because those are important for not only students, but for ourselves to have those um, support systems here. Um, your mental health influences how you think, feel, and behave in a daily life. Um, so, and it also affects your ability to cope with stress, overcome challenges, build relationships, and recover from life setbacks and hardships. Um, so with that being said, um, who here has what they think are some, not what they think, what they, what they believe are great self-care for themselves? Um, again, I'll jump out and say, again, for me, it's definitely music and art. Um, those are two things that help bring me back down to where I want and need to be. Um, listening to music, looking at art, going to a museum, it just helps kind of balance me um, from, you know, those, those daily um, road rages and other things that I tend to deal with. But, but those, are, those, are helps, those are good self-care um, for me. I can jump in and say that I love uh, fresh air. Nature is very therapeutic for me, you know, hearing birds chirp or just kind of watching the wind blowing the grass, you know, like anything peaceful like that, when I can get out and hike with my body, things like that, that's really good for me in one way that I practice self-care. Yeah, for, for me, it's, uh, you know, certainly uh, listening to music, uh, you know, uh, hanging out with friends, uh, you know, that, 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 that's a really good good uh, thing for me to kind of recharge my batteries and 
Michael, I know you you talked about you know making sure that you're you're staying on on top of your your uh, your support systems, right? Using your 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 doctors and your and your the people that you're working with. So that that's that that's a really another great example of of uh, you know of uh, practicing good self care and good coping strategies. Um, how about the rest of the folks on online Asia, Terika? Yeah, feel free to unmute yourself. I see a couple of students um, with us as well online now. So if you all would like to unmute and share anything, please feel free to. I love a good old fashioned nap because sometimes <laughs> when I get overloaded, it's almost like the thinking won't stop. So it's a good way for me to just hit that reset button and come back with a fresh perspective. Definitely. Yeah, and one thing I just want to add to what you said about uh, about you know the reset, right? But it's also it's also about connecting with your support systems as well, because sometimes when we isolate or we we retreat or or, or uh, step back from from our support systems and our uh, you know our con our social context, um, that that can also be that can also be difficult, right? Because uh, when we isolate, we tend to I like to describe it as climbing the walls of our mind, right? Um, and and so so we we have to be really careful to to balance that out. That yeah, we we definitely need retreat time, downtime, uh, but but also too much of that can also be debilitating or uh, difficult. And so really kind of figuring out how to balance you know alone time, but also having uh, you know we time as well, you know time with other people. Definitely. Asia, any, any other ones? Yeah, any more shares? I think there were some students online which I mentioned. How about Alex here in person? I do yard work. Yard work, okay. Yes. I just use the less intellectual, less time constrained activity I can do and immerse into it. And I just get out relaxed because mm -hmm. at that point, you know, and many times my brain organized some blackers that I have, you know, like if I'm not able to, like I'm saturated, when I come back to it, I, I, I'm ahead. Like my brain was able to work on like in background. Definitely. So uh, that's why I do work with my hands. Uh, that helps me a lot. Awesome. Great. What's your favorite, uh, do you have like a favorite vegetable or fruit that you like to plant or eat or garden? No, I do more like projects. Like okay. the last one was a- You got a deck coming shit. up, is that correct? Yeah. <laughs> And it ends. <laughs> yeah, lots of projects. <laughs> Big ones. <laughs> okay. Big projects. So right. as we move on to coping strategies, um, we wanted to say, so coping strategies, um, the definition of that is the ability to take care of ourselves. Um, so we just came from self-care. Um, we heard from a number of, um, of us what we do for self-care. So now coping strategies is kind of there to follow up with that self-care. Um, so what are some of your coping strategies as a group? Um, examples for not only myself, but for others are drawing, journaling, um, going for a walk, volunteering, um, yard work, meditation, yoga, faith practice, again, listening to music, cooking. There's a lot out there and there's probably a lot that you all do that we're unaware of. So um, let us know some of your coping some strategies. Examples. And Gerard, do you want to maybe talk about the positive, um, like po like the positivity of coping strategies, like how that can help stay up on path, help us to stay on path? Absolutely, I think a Alex alluded to that, right? That when 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 uh, when you have that that point of uh, saturation, you're you're emotionally or mentally saturated, uh, stress levels are high, you're feeling like you're at that that uh, sort of that that impasse, right? Stepping away, doing something that that is going to help you reduce stress, reduce anxiety can really be helpful, right? I, I think Alex, you, you described it really well. Where you're working with your hands, you know, you're you're working on something very tangible, very concrete. It's got an outcome, uh, outcome, uh, you know, a ready outcome that you will see, right? When you put up a fence, you you're going to see what uh, what it looks like right away. Um, so so that ability to to Disengage from something that might be causing you stress. It might be, you know, your your 
on a job search or your you know your and your your sending out resumes and you you know you're trying to figure out how to get interviews or it might be you know you're writing a paper right you're writing a 20, you've got a 20 page paper that's due in 3 weeks and or 2 weeks in your in your uh, english class and you you've got writer's block that happens a lot right um, and and even to the the even to some of the most famous writers they will they will allude and talk to to this idea of writer's block so be able to step away and really do something different right um, so you know uh, you know god gardening uh, you know <laughs> the physical work you talked about alex uh, you know I, I i i i always encourage students to use music uh, but i also encourage students to think about the kind of music that they're listening to because the type of music that we listen to does have an impact on us, right? Um, and so, being able to think about music that is going to help us relax, is going to help help us uh, get get excited, if if that's you know uh, what we're trying to lift our mood. Uh, so that that positivity that comes from coping, right? Again, Jenna mentioned taking walks in nature, very very helpful. Right, uh, it can really kind of get us grounded. It can get us centered and uh, and 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 decompressing from the stresses that we're experiencing. So, uh, so really, this idea of you know ways to unplug in a healthy way, because obviously we're looking for positive coping strategies, right? Where uh, you know there there are there, there are there, there are coping strategies which are not healthy, right? Uh, if 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 we're utilizing alcohol and, 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 and other substances, for example, uh, to cope with the situation, uh, th then, you know, really stepping back from that and really thinking back about, you know, what, 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 what does that look like? Why, why am I utilizing uh, this as a coping strategy? So, again, be thinking about, about co positive coping strategies. Um, I also want to mention that volunteerism, right? The act of volunteering is really, really powerful. Um, even if it's a small uh, act of volunteerism, uh, that can have such an impact, positive impact on, on our psyche, on our motivation, on reducing our stress because we've been able to help and contribute uh, to another person or to our community. So uh, be thinking about those ideas. Um, love to hear from, from people in the, in, the, in the group here, what are some other ideas that you might have? I was thinking too, just breathing. Yeah. Sometimes we don't notice that we're breathing shallow or yeah. that breathing in a certain way would help to calm us. But that was just one more thing that I thought of while you were talking. Deep breathing is huge, right? And um, so when you think about yoga, when you think about meditation, what is, uh, you know, you think even about, about physical activity, right? Physical exercise. It's all dependent on breathing, right? And and so sometimes, as Jenna mentioned, we we consciously we forget to breathe, and sometimes the act of consciously breathing helps us return to a, a more uh, stable and more more functional uh, uh, level, um, and and our anxiety and our stress does reduce as a result of that. So. All right. So let's move on to our smart goals here. So, here. All right. Yeah, go ahead. Just talk about this. Okay. All right. So, one of the ways that that um, you know, when when we're thinking about motivation, right? Mot the way I like to describe motivation and stress is they're like waves. Um, they come in. Uh, you know, a lot of times they'll come in fast and furious, right? Like kind of like during high tide at the beach you'll see water coming in and waves. Um, and that can happen with our motivation. Um, you know, this is, this is a point of the semester where a lot of students uh, do experience, you know, a, a reduction or difficulty in getting motivated, right? Because you've just come off spring break, uh, you've got a lot to do. It's about three, what, do we have about four weeks left? Uh, give or take. Yeah, yeah, maybe three and a half, four weeks to go, right? And so there's all of the stuff where you're you're looking at it and saying, oh my goodness, how do I how do I even get this figured out? Um, and so one of the things that we really encourage is breaking uh, stuff down, right? Really trying to get 
uh, trying to get organized in terms of setting a goal. And um, so the, the acronym SMART, S-M-A-R-T, stands for Specific, Measurable, Attainable, Realistic, and Timely, right? Relevant, realistic, yeah. Re relevant, yeah, and realistic and, and timely. And, and so really try to construct a goal that is going to meet all of that, right? So that it's, it's, a, it's specific, it's measurable, it's attainable, it's relevant, and it's timely, right? So you want to you wanna be thinking about how you're going to set your goals for these next few weeks uh, to get you through the finish line. So one of the things that we thought might be helpful is, uh, is to think – to, to, for, for the students in the, in, in, the, in the group to think about what, what is something that you're trying to, to get done uh, before end of semester and maybe thinking about a goal like that and I'd like you to write that down, uh, spend some, maybe take the next two to three minutes to, to write it down. And then we'll, we'll, we'll if, if people are willing to do it, uh, if you're willing to share your goal, that would be awesome. This is something you all can use anytime. If you can't think of anything right now, that is completely fine. But um, basically, we just want you to think about, you know, what goal you want to achieve and just start thinking about how you're going to make that happen. And this SMART goal um, is really helpful, especially if you're like a, a little bit of a procrastinator like myself. Um, you've got that last bit, that T there. Um, that timely, that time base. So you're setting yourself up with a time to finish said goal, which is extremely important because I think we all have goals for ourselves, but we don't have, um, you know, that 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 time based aspect of it. It might be specific, it might be relevant or realistic, but if we just say, "Hey, I want to," you know, "I want to finish my degree," you know, we're not really you know, holding ourselves accountable to a time or to a specific goal, or if I want to finish a project, you know, setting up that time and really, you know, putting yourself accountable for that goal is, is extremely important. It's really helped me, um, you know, utilize SMART goals. Um, I've been familiar with SMART goals since I've been working with the Add the Tops program, and that was over eight years ago. So I've been doing SMART goals for quite a while now. Yeah, and these SMART goals, they're like the baby steps. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm going to start using my planner because that'll help me stay organized. Like, you can start small. I know Terika loves herself some SMART goals. <laughs> Do I? <laughs> <laughs> no, SMART goals are good. Definitely good. You just got to... I think accountability partners can sometimes be helpful with the SMART goal, too, and I think that's super helpful with students. And I think it's a great thing um, in terms of like connecting students with coaches, being able to take things a step forward and maybe creating SMART goals with mm -hmm. students to try to help them focus their intentions and then also keep them accountable. Yes, absolutely. One of the things I really want to stress is that uh, that you know sometimes we think about goals as needing to be big. They can be really small, and and I actually encourage uh, you to you know in keeping with the with the acronym right with with uh, smart that you you actually break it down into micro goals, uh, break it down into smaller steps, right? Because that's the way you're going to start to get build momentum. And so if you're able to say to yourself, hey, I'm going to get X, Y, and Z done, uh, that builds that momentum towards getting, you know, to getting your bigger goal achieved, right? So, so has anyone been able to write down, jot down a goal for, the, for themselves for this semester? Alex, you had your hand up. Well, uh, I was going to say about smart goals that uh, I like another acronym, which is uh, MATNA which is the best alternative. Hmm. So sometimes things don't go through, but if you have a plan B, so to speak, or something maybe mm -hmm. it's not all what you want, but it gets you through, it feels less less pressure, right? Mm -hmm. It's just like, there's no way in this direction. You know? And I think when we say about smart and achievable, that's another dimension of achievable, right? Like, oh, things go well, I can do this, but I always can do this other thing. Mm -hmm. It's easier, not exactly what I want, but it gave me. So staying flexible. Yeah. 
Yeah. yeah. Staying flexible and yeah, and 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 being being realistic, right? Mm -hmm. About what's achievable. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's move on to small things that we can do that might be helpful to stay on path. So, creating a to-do list is important um, to keep yourself organized and to make sure that you um, are getting things done that you need to do. But when you're creating that to-do list, make sure it's practical and achievable. Because a lot of times we tend to overload ourselves. It's better to have one to three things per day that we really need to get done rather than have this huge list that seems insurmountable. Um, so using a calendar and a planner daily will help to keep our lives organized as well, especially as students, we both, or we all know that um, that can get, you know, that needs to be organized because a lot of, we have deadlines, we have um, other things going on outside of our school life. It's good to use a planner to, you know, start thinking about how to manage everything. And so we were wondering, um, what are ways for you to maintain and initiate social contact, but also keep you connected, or that also keep you connected but that allow you to about to balance your social time with your academics. So you're still getting your work done while you're remaining connected with people you care about. You want to repeat the question? Yeah. So what are ways for you to have social connection, but also that you are balancing your school work? I go straight to time management. Um, if I'm understanding um, the question, for me, lines can get blurred. So I've been in positions where I've been like based in, in like schools, and sometimes the lines will get blurred if you have people that are coming in and out of your space all the time, and and they're more sort of using their free time to kind of sort of come into your space, and maybe you set aside time to be productive and work, and sometimes like being mindful about how you manage your time and even what spaces you exist in when you're trying to be productive can be huge. So maybe don't put yourself in a position to be distracted if you've got work to do, but set aside time for social time. That's a good one. Yeah, like understanding your triggers in those ways. Yeah, for those of you who might have seen uh, seen the, 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 the quadrant diagram, that uh, that in time management uh, activity that where where it talks about quadrant one, quadrant two, quadrant three and four, you know, with important and urgent tasks and speaks to what Tarek is talking about, right? That in quadrant three, sometimes we can get distracted uh, by, you know, it might be it might be important, right? It might, but it uh, or it might be urgent, but not important, right? Uh, someone might be saying, hey, let's go, let's uh, let's go to a party tonight, and you know. Tomorrow morning you have an exam, uh, so really stepping back and thinking about, hey, is it a, is it a great idea for me to, to 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 go to a party tonight, knowing that I have to be fresh and ready to take this exam tomorrow morning? Uh, so that that I think I think that's a good example, Tarik, of where where people can can be distracting, and so you have to balance that piece out. Okay, thank you. Okay, so this la um, second to last slide is, there's some tips here to keep us on path. So your path, it's always a work in progress. Allow yourself grace if you fall off the track that you've created. Uh, focus your energy on reestablishing these path and goals if you do fall off. We all do it, it's okay. Uh, moving forward, choosing to see the good in a situation, embracing this present moment, and focusing on what you can control and influence. Gerard, if you yeah. would care to elaborate. Sure, sure. Um, again, I mean, I think uh, you know all 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 ideas on on what what we can what we can take uh, accountability for, right? And what we can control and influence. I think those are the you know the really critical things to to think about. Uh, you know how we can set ourselves up for success or. Uh, for for good good health uh, emotionally and physically and so again thinking about all the things we've talked about in this last one hour 
you know, when we think about when we think about managing stress, when we think about reducing our anxiety, about improving our emotional and physical uh, uh, health, uh, about really looking at our wellness through through the lens of self care, um, you know, practicing good coping strategies. That if we are, you know, then setting goals that are realistic, goals that are achievable, goals that may be, you know, small in action, but the sum of those actions can really lead to, to big uh, to big gains, uh, and and to be be thinking about you know again about you know some of the uh, the, the things that we we have to constantly work on right uh, because as I mentioned motivation uh, can 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 ebb and flow uh, so can stress and so those can get get in the way of uh, of us staying on our path and and so being cognizant of that. Really thinking about the things that we're doing, uh, you know, and 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 the, the the deliberate and purposeful steps we're we're taking to to achieving our goals. So, all right. And so, in our last three minutes or so, um, we're just going to talk about the resources that the campus has. And um, if you go to Madison College's homepage and you search up. Um, you know, anything as far as counseling or, excuse me, or mental health and wellness, anything like that, you'll get a lot of information. And some of those pages have um, a lot of different links that are helpful. So um, you can connect with a counselor about your personal mental health. Um, you can schedule through the Navigate app, or you can call the Student Success Center at 608-246-6076. And you can also meet with a coach by calling that number too. And us coaches, we really want to make sure that if you have a goal set, and if you don't have a goal set, we'll help you to set a goal if you like, but we want to make sure that you're reaching your goals and we'll be here to help you in any way that we can to, you know, see you through that goal, whether it's graduating or completing a semester's class, anything like that. So reach out to us at any time if you would like to. And to piggyback off of that real quick, just one last plug for that u.madisoncollege.edu. Um, just wanted to plug a couple other things. So top skills learned by students using this, um, using this program or productive study habits, career goal setting, and stress management. So across the board, those were the three top um, skills that students were able um, to learn and utilize. And then also one thing that I noticed, and I'm sure um, Jenna did too, going through the U um, app, is they have these self-checks. So if you're just, um, you know, you're not sure where you are in the day or, you know, you're just feeling a little off, there's these self-checks on that app that kind of help you find balance and really help conquer stress for that day and hopefully beyond. Um, but that's just another resource for you um, other than meeting with a counselor, a coach, or someone, um, a resource on campus. So again, I just wanted to plug that one more time. Also, uh, plug, plugging uh, counseling services, again, covered under your tuition, uh, free to currently stu enrolled students. Uh, we provide, you know, again, personal uh, counseling, which covers the whole gambit of mental health. Uh, certainly, you know, if you're experiencing financial or relationship stresses, anything that is impacting your ability to successfully complete your, your academic endeavors, uh, come and see us. It's confidential. Um, if you require or need need a longer term therapy, we can help you find clinicians in the community, and we can continue to work with you alongside uh, your your therapists in the community. So, really want to plug counseling services. Really plug the idea that you know there are supports for all of you, uh, and and to really you know access and utilize the, the resources available to you. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us today.